May I remind you that trading is risky and not suitable for everyone. Your past performance, good or bad, is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never risk money you cannot afford to lose. Welcome to Quantbox Daily. Today is March 22nd, and it's a Wednesday. Today feels like a pretty important day. Hmm, I wonder what's coming in the news today. So what is Quantbox? Quantbox is your global macroeconomic quant in a box. For those of you who are new to the channel, it's an amazing tool that gives you a fundamental bias by using a number of data points that are collated from a number of different sources and put into a beautiful dashboard for your convenience. It's very powerful because it gives you a fundamental bias, which you can then identify or verify using technical analysis. The beautiful thing is one week trial is just 790. Add it to your trading. It'll make a massive difference. Here we are on the dashboard, top buys for today, top sells for today. There's your current strength chart. There's your strongest trends. There's your CRT data. There's retail sentiment. However, if we just gave that to you, that would not really be amazing. What's nice about this is that we've got this beautiful market heat map over here, which is just top notch, showing you all the pairs that are currently bullish for the session, all the pairs that are currently bearish for the session. What's nice about this is you can look at these pairs as an indication of movement and identify if you can either sell bearish pairs that are currently up or continue trading bullish trends. But ideally, if it is a bullish trend here, you'd like price to pull back to support. In this case here, with the bearish pairs, can you buy them if they have a bullish bias? Or can you continue trading them in a bearish direction? Now, what we're going to do is you can look at this, this updates regularly. So this is a very nice tool to use before any market open. But right now, we're going to use the score chart summary. The score chart summary shows you all your pairs and shows you their signal. As you can see, we have a number of neutral pairs currently popping up. We're going to leave those alone because that means we either have strong versus strong or weak versus weak. Now, of course, there are still trading opportunities available on those pairs, but we're going to focus on the pairs that have clear signals. USD are USD CAD, gold for the buyers, and you can see the sales are quite a long list. So what we're going to do is instead of just looking at USD ZAR and USD CAD, let's take a look at all our dollar pairs. So right now, oh, before we do that, what's in the news today? If I was sort of sitting down and going, okay, well, you know, do I need to be aware of anything that is perhaps high impact? Let's see, impact. Hmm, I'm looking for high. What do we have that's high? Hmm. What? Fed interest rate decision today. Oh my gosh, that's important, right? So, sorry, I'm being silly. But it's true though. It's nice that there's a news calendar right here on the dashboard. So I can look at Euro dollar. I can say, well, if I've been following the Fed lately, I know that they're concerned about increasing too quickly, but they're also concerned about inflation. How's inflation looking in the in the US? Oh, 6%. Okay, cool. Down 0.4%. So that means that whatever they've been doing, i.e. increasing interest rates, is having an effect. Okay, cool. Are we at the 3% targets? No, not yet. We have a way to go. Cool. So what do we expect later? Going to definitely pay attention to the meeting minutes. Maybe a increase with a less hawkish tone. Cautious but optimistic. Well, We'll tune in later. In the meantime, what I can do is I can take a look at my currency pairs, dollar being the pairs, and I can have a look at my bias. Euro dollar current, currently coming through neutral. Pound dollar currently coming through the sell. Let's take a look at pound dollar. So pound dollar currently, you can see here, all our moving averages currently very neutral. Not a massive fan of that. Although if I'm going to sell then really what I'm looking for is top of the range. So I'm looking for price to get up to resistance. Monthly R1, definitely a pivot point for selling. What's interesting, friends, is we came off the S1 start of the month. S1, R1, great pivot points for ranges. So towards sometime today, maybe today's close, we're at a decent level of resistance. We can take this down. Of course, in terms of the H4 time frame, we can see here we do have a 21 above a 55. Our 200 and 100 have crossed. Price is currently bullish. We've got a profit-taking zone just above us. 
Maybe that's important later on today as we head into the U.S. session. Keep an eye on that. If price does get to a level of resistance. Now, the thing is that in this situation here, we haven't come down to come up. We're coming off a 21 EMA at the moment. Nonetheless, there's your resistance. Your resistance is at the profit-taking zone. And you've got confluence. Where's my R1? Have I got no confluence pivot points on here? Okay, I need to sort that out. So uh, you've got confluence of the R1 at 12311. Just inside this profit-taking zone. Keep an eye on that confluence. When price comes up to resistance, all you're going to do is on the M15 time frame, you're simply going to pay attention to lower lows, lower highs, and just pass that down the line and make sure that all the time frames are bearish before you take that trade. Okay? Fantastic. Make sure you set it up before you take the trade. That's our pound dollar. Nice thing is I'm not looking to buy because my fundamental bias is sell. Okay? USD CAD, we already know is a buy. So you can see here, strong buy coming through USD CAD. USD CAD, buy. You can see right now, not a great time for buying. Okay? Currently got this channel. Okay. You'd like to see a higher, higher, higher low before you buy. You can see there, price is messing about. You are currently in a buy zone. Also an S1, R1 possibility for the week. Okay. So what I'd like to see is I'd like to see the daily time frame closing at support. Similar to pound dollar actually. So pound dollar coming for the daily closing at resistance. USD CAD coming down for the day closing at support. Let's have a look and see how that closes later on today. Looking at the rest of the pairs, here's your Aussie USD. Coming through the strong sell. Taking a look at Aussie USD. You can see here, we spoke about this price coming off this 21 EMA. We also spoke about this over here. The structure was just a bit odd. And yesterday we were talking about price. Where were we yesterday? Yesterday we were inside this range over here, looking for a breakdown, a pullback. This is currently very sideways, friends. Okay, I need price to close at resistance. The problem is if my 21 EMAs fail to make a lower low, that's very concerning for me. Okay, you can also identify support like that, right? Almost looks like we're climbing a set of stairs. That doesn't mean it won't be buried at some point in time. It just means that right now, yesterday's candle closed at support. So I'd like to see the price for the daily close at resistance. Let's see how that goes today. A lot of setups we're waiting for. Obviously, because there's big news coming. Kiwi dollar, also a sell. Kiwi dollar coming through. You can see there yesterday we closed in the middle of the range. Not a massive fan of trading that. So going to leave that alone. Again, I want to see daily closing at resistance. Okay. That takes care of our dollar pairs. Okay. In terms of gold, have a look at gold quickly. Let's just bring gold up over here. we got over there we saw this yesterday price and profit taking zone can't buy up here okay if you're looking for a counter trend trade it's absolutely possible to do it there um what you're paying attention to is lower lows and lower highs and you can see that that was from sort of yesterday day before yesterday day before yesterday you can see there you haven't really had if this was your indication This over here could have been a nice trading opportunity for you. Price make the lower low, pull back lower high. You can see here, if I bring this into M5, bearish, and M1 as well. Let's take a look. Bearish. Okay. That's if you're taking gold down. Of course, you realize that um, you'd like to see a lower low, lower high on other time frames, to be honest. Right now, you've got price breaking out of this range, looking for a pullback to the bottom of that range. Okay. You don't have lower lows, lower highs on the H4 time frame, not long term bearish just yet. Cool. And again, the bias is bullish. So you wouldn't buy up there because you're very, very high. And the counter trend trade doesn't look like it's setting up very nicely. So maybe wait for price to come down to support. Okay, cool. Kiwi Swissy. Let's look at our Swissies quickly. So Swissies, we've got Euro Swissy, neutral, Pound Swissy. Neutral. Kiwi Swissy. Sell.
Okay, cool. I can't sell there. Daily candles not close at resistance. Move on.com. Cat Swissy, sell. Mm. Yeah. Pricing at that support over there. Price didn't close at resistance. Also, 21 EMA not forming lower lows. That's a concern for me. Okay. That's how Swiss is out the way. Our yens. Let's look at our yen pairs. Aussie yen coming through neutral. CAD yen coming through a cell. Let's take a look at CAD yen. Okay. I'm looking for price to come into resistance. You've got this resistance left hand side over here. Okay. You're not you're very much out of position. The 21 EMA stopped making lower lows. That's a very big um problem for you if you're a bear. Okay, you're looking for this trend to resume, i.e. lower low, lower high. All price coming up and closing at higher resistance. We're not there yet, especially since yesterday. Well, price is at the five. Okay. So you could you could verify that the problem is well not there's no problem really. You can see there you trap price over here. You get that lower, low, lower high, and you're golden, okay? If the lower, low, lower high comes out later, like, for example, it's not within the next four hours after the four-hour candle is closed, you must pay attention to the four-hour chart again for the bias camera for New York. Okay, euro, yen, sell. Okay, 21 euro, flat. you got resistance left-hand side over here. Perhaps top of range forming in terms of how you trade that. You are you are definitely you're not at support at the moment. Okay. If you're taking that down again, same thing. You're looking for lower lows, lower highs. Trap price in this range over here. Once price breaks out, pulls back, sell. Look at the M5, look at the M1, make sure it's bearish across the board, and then you can trade accordingly. Okay. Pound yen coming through with a bias of sell. And you've got a lot of nonsense here. You have got resistance left-hand side, okay? Problem is price came up to this resistance and failed to make a lower low. That's a very big concern for you. Price is currently coming up higher, okay? If this was bearish, you're looking for lower lows, lower highs once price is at resistance, which you kind of have right now in terms of the four-hour candle. So you need to see you need to see a lower low, lower high pretty soon, okay? And then verify it down the line. Kiwi Yen coming through the bias of neutral. Great. Now, of course, I could save myself the time. Instead of going to the chart and looking at all the biases under the categories, I could just look at the score chart summary. And you can see it saving me a lot of time. But I'm just giving you an idea of what's going on, right? Done the Swissies, done the Yen, done the dollars. How about Aussie Kiwi? Aussie Kiwi coming through the bias of sell. On the daily, you are at a 21 EMA. Okay. So if you if this is going to be bearish and so go down lower, then you are looking for a lower low, lower high. Okay, and it's either in there or alternatively, you could be looking for a lower low, lower high. Let's get through these zones quickly. Looking for a lower low, lower high in the uh, in the M fifteen time frame. You got price breaking out of this range over here. Looking for a pullback to that. Okay, if price pulls back and closes there, verify lower time frames. Recognize the fact though that you have got a wider range here. And price is still inside that range. But if you get a pullback to that lower high, pay attention to that. So that's why I'm going to just pull the range a little bit narrower. And make sure you verify that lower time frames down the board. Okay, what else we got? Done that, done that. Okay, that's it. That's our list. So things are pretty chilled. Watch how a lot of these things change or potentially change as we get news later. Keep an eye on your charts. This market, once you've gone through your score chart summary and you know what's going on, you can actually use it in conjunction with your market heat map. So if I look at over here, for example, if I go to my second tab over here, go to market heat map, what I can do is I can say, okay, cool, what am I doing? I'm looking at the, all your indices are up, by the way, look at that. Um, looking at Aussie USD, currently bullish, and I can look at the score chart and say, okay, cool, my Aussie USD is there it is there, sorry, strong sell. So that's nice and quick and easy, right? Cool. Aussie USD, currently bullish, bias of sell. Have I got price at resistance? But remember, 
you've got to verify things technically. You don't just pull the trigger and sell. Okay, price has to be at resistance. There's not a resistance. You have to get lower lows and lower highs and sometime, some time frame somewhere. Once you got that, you verify, you take the trade and off you are to the races. Remember, this game requires patience and discipline. You have those two things, you remain liquid. Good luck with the meeting later. Hope you have an amazing day. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Ta-ta.